class carriers, the most dominant ships ever created. Combining a highly trained crew with the latest in military technology, they are prepared for combat at a moment's notice. On the flight deck, stand by to recover aircraft. Salute. Board lights, winds cross. Status of the man along. A carrier is a billion components operated by 5,000 men and women with one mission to launch airplanes into combat. Gulf, the carrier USS George Washington is deploying for six months. All day long, her flight deck is busy with warplanes taking off and landing. A vivid display of collaboration as the men and women of her crew keep the ship's aviators airborne. Nimitz-class carriers like George Washington maintain air wings of more than 70 planes able to strike targets hundreds of miles away. You can look around this flight deck and you can see aircraft that are uh, being prepared to go over our rack because uh, we're doing it every day and every night. Forward deployed presence, taking off and landing on an aircraft carrier. That's why we're here. Our aircraft are uh, uh, operating over Iraq, uh, on call at a moment's notice to those uh, soldiers and uh, Marines on the beach uh, who might need the close air support that's provided uh, by those aircraft. George Washington is a mobile fortress. Her magazines hold more than 2,000 tons of bombs, missiles, and other ordnance ready for use by an air wing that can launch planes every 45 seconds. The U.S. Navy deploys nine Nimitz-class carriers. A tenth is under construction. Each has a 5,000-member crew. These warships can cruise at more than 33 knots, transporting their firepower anywhere on the planet in days. In a combat zone like the Persian Gulf, a carrier battle group can tip the balance of conflict. When something happens in the world, the first question always is, well, where are the carriers? Our whole reason for being in existence is to be able to go anywhere in the world and launch these airplanes so that they can do our nation's bidding. For these fighting ships to function at peak performance, their crews must train relentlessly. We try to train like we would fight. When we do cyclic operations, this, we kind of try to do things like, like we would in a, in a normal combat evolution. So we're always training like we fight. Aboard George Washington, that training began months ago at her home port on the Virginia coast. Naval Station Norfolk, sailors new to GW stand guard. The crew is preparing for one of its regular exercises in combat readiness. In port, a carrier has no aircraft. Her pilots use airfields inland. This leaves the ship vulnerable, so security on board tightens. My security guys are stationed throughout the ship so that we can protect the ship in case of any kind of like, say, swimmer attack or even a uh, small boat attack. You know, since the USS Cole uh, incident occurred, we've really stepped up on those force protection. My guys are standing around with their M16s and their uh, 240s or M60s please, so that we can protect just about every inch of the ship. As long as vessels have been putting to sea, sailors have known what it means to learn the ropes. And even in the 21st century, 
That includes casting off from the dock. Tugboats nudge GW through the busy harbor. Norfolk's crowded waters and narrow tolerances keep all hands alert. Over several months, the ship leaves port repeatedly to undergo a series of tests. Every crew member, pilot, and system must qualify as combat ready. Once a departing carrier reaches the open ocean, her crew clears the ship's air wing to touch down. One by one, aviators land their multi-million dollar craft. Aboard carriers like George Washington, the typical air wing comprises two squadrons of F-14 Tomcat fighters and two squadrons of F-A-18 Hornet fighter bombers. Fuel and supplies are shuttled by C-2 Greyhounds, and control craft called E-2 Hawkeyes will guide pilots on their missions. A squadron of S-3B Vikings defends against submarine attack. EA-6B Prowlers handle electronic surveillance and jam enemy radar. Eight H-60 Seahawk helicopters ferry supplies and mail. In combat and foul weather, the Seahawks provide search and rescue coverage. Air wings securely on board, the $4.5 billion carrier steers for deeper waters. Nimitz-class carriers are more than 20 stories tall and longer than three football fields, the largest warships ever. Nearly 40 feet of these vessels are below surface, displacing more than 98,000 tons of water. Their two nuclear reactors generate 280,000 horsepower and only need to refuel every 20 to 25 years. These immense vessels are double-bottomed to guard against torpedoes and mines. Their 18 lower decks hold sleeping berths, corridors, situation rooms, and galleys, the day-to-day -day settings where sailors work, eat, and sleep. The largest single space is the flight deck, 1,092 feet long and 251 feet wide. These 4.5-acre seaborne airfields are divided into sections fore and aft. Planes land on the aft section angled at nine and a half degrees, so that if a pilot bolters or fails to touch down safely, he can power back into the air. With warplanes constantly landing, taking off, and moving about, a carrier flight deck is a supremely dangerous workplace. On the flight deck, uh, we have very harsh conditions. Some people like to say that it's one of the most dangerous streets in the world because of everything that's going on. You really have to have your head on your shoulders and be thinking about everything that's going on around you. What's going on is a deafening hurricane of noise generated by whirling propellers, jet engines, and sudden gusts that can send an unwary sailor into the sea. Amid these perils, the only real protection is knowing your job, no matter what it is. There's a lot of different colors of jerseys that you see on the flight deck, and the jersey that I'm wearing is yellow. That represents aircraft directors. Uh, they're the ones moving the aircraft around on the deck. There's also uh, some blue shirts behind me. Those are plane handlers. Uh, they chalk and chain the aircraft. Also, they're tractor drivers or elevator operators. There's also green shirts. Uh, they're the technicians that operate the catapult and arresting gear that launch and recover the aircraft. There's also some red shirts behind me. Those are the crash and salvage personnel. And also purple shirts. And uh, those purple shirts are what we call grapes. And they are the refuelers. They refuel and defuel all the aircraft. 